My name is Kent Philpott, and I'm going to present a little essay that I wrote, which really got me going on it, was a book by Ayan Hirsi Ali called Infidel, a wonderful book. I've read all of her books that she's written, uh, this marvelous woman um, from Somalia, and she does a lot for women's rights, a former Muslim, and in the process of her moving away from the grips of Islam, uh, she moved to the place of being an atheist. And I really uh, connected with that. I had some of the same thoughts myself. Now, uh, I am the pastor of Miller Avenue Baptist Church in Mill Valley, California. I've been a pastor for 45 years. I'm a committed Bible-believing Christian. But I have an essay that I wrote titled, If I Were Not a Christian, I Would Be an Atheist. And I want to present this here. And again, it's based on what Ayan Hirsi Ali talked about. And I think in her critical analysis of Islam, where she moved to an atheist, atheistic position, is something that everyone ought to do to examine why it is they believe what they believe. And so here's what I've come up with with this little essay. Uh, this little essay. Again, uh, if I were not a Christian, I would be an atheist. Consider two issues. First, if there is a God who created the entire universe, why is there a fallen angel called Satan who is allowed to run riot over that creation? The God of the Bible is said to have made humans in his image. The reason given is that he might have fellowship with them. Then along came the devil, who from the very start caused horrific misery to descend upon us all. It suggests that this God is not omnipotent, but is instead weak and limited. Furthermore, does it mean that God is not fair? As a serious Christian and student of the Bible, I find that there is no convincing an answer to this incredible paradox. Certainly, I can manage a few arguments like God wanted to relate to beings who had a free will, or some angels like Lucifer had free will and rebelled, and we are stuck with the consequences, or it was all part of a grand scheme to separate the good people from the bad people, or it was to show how awful disobedience and sin is. And there's others as well. So there are more explanations than that theologians over the centuries have given, but these described above are the most well-known. To many of us, however, a lot of them ring hollow and do not satisfy the inner being, much less the mind. Oh, if we could just neatly and cleanly tie up the loose ends so we could be satisfied and not think of it again. However, our musing leaves us wondering whether there is a God at all. It has crossed my mind many times that it is easier to be an atheist than a Christian. Second issue. If God so loved the world, you know, John 3.16, why would this God send people blinded and deceived by the devil to an everlasting hell based upon their inability to decide to believe, or, according to another viewpoint, because they simply were not among those elected to go to heaven. Indeed, it is a strange kind of love that would permit helpless, clueless, satanically deceived creatures to spend eternity being tormented in hellfire. Which of these issues is the most problematic? They are actually connected I think, as it seems to me, and I confess I have no real answers for either. To make matters worse, the Bible writers do not clearly and directly deal with these issues that I am raising here. According to Scripture, there is evil, and that evil, uh, and that evil will be banished to hell forever. Indeed, hell was created for the devil and his angels. See Matthew twenty-five forty-one. Any biblical concordance will reveal that Jesus often spoke of both the devil and hell. This fact speaks volume to those who trust in the Bible. 
Yet for most Christians, we are horrified to realize that those banished to hell are real flesh and blood people who will suffer beyond imagination. Wouldn't it be easier, more convenient, even more intellectual to be an atheist? I have read Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, and others uh, who champion atheism, and over the course of years of my years in ministry, I have known, known some who have opted for the atheistic position, if only for a period of time. However, I will not do so. The atheistic position is one I reject, but I respect it as well. I will stick with unanswered questions, but I am settled on the reality of a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is the God of the Bible and who has revealed his written and living word to us. I believe all that is contained in the Apostles' Creed, and I know I am safe in the salvation my Lord Jesus Christ has won for me in his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. I am now patiently waiting to be in his presence in heaven, either through my own death or the return of Jesus in the clouds in the last day. It is a most unusual conviction the Holy Spirit gives to us. We Christians will face the challenge of atheists, sometimes uncomfortably, even when we have nothing much to say in response. We must be aware that the atheist position is also a matter of faith. It lacks any definite and tangible authority. No one can prove there is no God or that there is no heaven or hell or Satan or demons. The atheist is just as unable to prove his position as the ones he argues against. The questions and issues may trouble us. We will continue to have doubts. And there are questions we can hardly wait to ask once we get to heaven, but I am confident that all of what is mystery now will become clear down the road. My salvation is not contingent on my understanding of the myriad conundrums common to human existence. Perhaps this is what faith is all about. Not blind faith, but a faith that is given to us despite how we experience this world and which is not dependent on having to uphold cultural, tribal, clan, community, or family honor and values. One last point. How is it that I imagine to have the capacity to unravel the age-old mysteries anyway? Just how presumptuous is it to suppose such is even possible? I can barely get through a day without doing something quite stupid. Must I embrace atheism because I cannot answer big questions? I don't think so. Others may, but I will not. Again, this is Kent Philpott speaking to you from Mill Valley, California on February the 20th, 2016. So long.